no matau te whipi, te hara mai pēnei rā te rahi, o ngā mokopuna o ngā tamariki o ngā rangatiro o āpopo, e pōhiri nei i runga i ngā āhotanga a kui mā koroma no reira, koutau rā te nā koutau, te nā koutau, te nā koutau. Kuri kawaki kia koe rā e te tūmu waki i ngā kaiako, koutau e arahina tēnei kopapa, te nā koutau. Te nā koutau e pupuri nei i ngā tāma a kui mā koroma, hei painga mo te katoa, hauma ko te Māori ana, no reire e mihi ana, e mihi ana, e mihi ana. No mātau o te tāhuhu, te whiwhi, te mau mai tēnei o ngā tāma o te mingita, me wāna kōrero, me wāna tāonga, pēr ka hoatu i a koutau, ki te noho kuku koutau, ki te whakaromo koutau, ki oana tohu tohu, a koa ke nei tātou ka kite e ngā hua. No reire tēnei au, e mihi ana ki a koutau katoa. Ki a koe rei te mingita, Nei rā te mihi ki a koe, me ngā tāngo ko mau mai i a koe mai te whare miere, no ngā mokopuna, no ngā tamariki, no ngā te āpōpō, te take, no rātau anō te hua, no reire e mihi ana ki a koe. O ti rā, koutou rā, te nā koutou, te nā koutou, huri nō, kia ora tātou katoa. Come on. 
Katangi de Tete, Katangi de Kaka, Katangi Hokia Ho, Tihei Moriora, Tena Koto, Tena Koto, Tena Koto Katoa. Firstly, a heartfelt welcome to the Right Honourable James Niti, our Associate Minister of Education. We are wrapped and very appreciative to have you here with us to announce this new initiative, whatever that might be, and for us to share a bit of us with you. I would also like to welcome and acknowledge the personnel from your office, the company new minister, and those from the Tamaki Makoto local MOE office, Acting Director Rachel, Service Manager Debbie, Education Advisor Joseph, and Kaitafingua Dawn. Welcome. As an aside, can I share a wee anecdote with you all, which I'm sure, Minister, you will recall. When I first met the Minister many years ago, when she was also a school principal, working in the real world, working in the real world, where it really matters, we were both on a group negotiating the principal's employment contract. Over the weeks, Jan always sat next to me so she could control me, so she could shush and calm me and kick my legs under the table to stop me from putting my foot in my mouth or from showing my thoughts, which I do so well by the expressions on my face. Do you recall that? I thought you might. So that I could hide the expressions on my face if the other side said things I disagreed with. Now you are on that other side, Jan. And I am still learning to not show my thoughts on my face. But seriously, we are appreciative we now have someone on that other side with get up and go and knows what the reality is in our world. So thank you for that. We also thank you, and by you I mean the government, for your support of schools through the Ministry of Education and the resourcing provided to us, even if we don't always agree. And we also appreciate the time and effort you exert, and no doubt the debates and arguments and discussions that go on, to get this support for us. So we want you to know how we also work tirelessly and enthusiastically in our place, with our ever-present goal to raise student presence and attendance, to raise student engagement, and ultimately, to raise student achievement. Whilst we realise effective teachers can teach under a tree, with just their enthusiasm, their passion and their knowledge, we also know we must have effective resourcing in these complex times. And we must show and give our children the care and love we have for them and the belief we have in them. These facts impact directly on the way they attend and interact at school, the way they contribute and participate at school, and the way they learn and achieve. If you accept the argument that what you learn at school sets you up for life, then you must also argue that to be successful in life, you must attend school. After all, you can't learn what schools teach if you are not there. And we know there is a strong correlation between attendance and achievement at school. So any support is good support. Everything we do at Mararewa Intermediate School, we try to personalise as much as possible for our kids, as this will provide them with the opportunity to be the best they possibly can be, and to challenge the status quo, ensuring we meet the needs and expectations of today and tomorrow, 
whilst also providing them with what they need in order to be successful future adults and contributors to the economy and workplace. All kids in Manawewa deserve the best. They should have the best, and it is my job in our school and my colleagues in their schools to make sure we are on top of our game and that we are giving these kids our best in terms of the way we work with them, the resources they have to use, the buildings they access, and the araha and energy that surround them. This is not and should not just be a job for any of the staff if we genuinely want to make a difference. It is a calling, it is a passion, and giving of time is important. Liking and loving our children is important. And the more we put in, the more we get out, and the likelihood of raised student achievement is maximised. Whilst we know the complexity of today's world, which I guess can loosely be defined as economic and social issues, are making it difficult for some kids to get to school regularly, we should not use these issues as an excuse to stop us from at least trying to get these kids to school. We may have no control over some of these issues, but we can certainly develop a culture in our schools where we make it possible for kids to want to be at school, to be fed, and thank you the government for the Lunches and Schools program, as well as the many other people and programs that also support schools and our types of communities with food and the like. And we can make sure our kids are in a place where they are happy, engaged and learning. Whilst this can be difficult, and there will be many out there who will criticise me for saying this because they say it is beyond our control, the kind of education we provide and the way we deliver the curriculum and the way we create a welcoming and attractive physical environment can encourage kids to be at school. If we take a holistic view and recognise the different circumstances students are in, rather than ignoring them or just complaining about the social and emotional factors that affect them every day, and we build strong and healthy relationships between staff, students and their whānau, then this will bring greater understanding and more likelihood of student engagement and school attendance. Just two weeks ago, Minister, we had a night event at school called Boys' Night Out and Girls' Night In. Held on two different nights where students come along for a night of fun and learning, but each boy or girl comes with a significant male or female in their lives. The goals of these events is not just about fun and learning, but it is about getting the adults in our kids' lives into their environment, to see what school is like, and for their adult to show their kid that they are interested, that they care. And on these two nights, on the cusp of winter, so a tad chilly, we had over 1,100 students and parents caregivers. This shows our whānau care deeply about their kids, and they want to be involved. So it's up to schools to find the ways to do so, with a more conscious and effective effort. On a big picture level, at our place, we do this by interweaving the five concepts from Professor Angus McFarland's Educultural Wheel philosophy, a Māori philosophy that permeates our school around Whanangatanga, Kotahitanga, Manakitanga, Rangateratanga and Puatanga, into all that we keep the pulse and energy of our school alive, to make kids want to be in our place every single day. I could wax lyrical about the specific actions and things we do on a daily basis to ensure our kids are at school, but that would take forever, so I'll leave that to Mr Bartlett, our DP Pastoral Care, to talk about after this. However, what I can say is we know what we do is working. The evidence is observable on every school day when kids are everywhere, between 6.30 in the morning and 5pm at night, and indeed often in weekends and school holidays when there are activities and practices and events going on. And so can I say to you, Minister, any other or extra support you provide is and would be much appreciated. I assure you, in our school at least, with our school vision and philosophy around student engagement, we will make it work if our constant quest for ongoing improvement and success is achieved. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Mr Devereaux. We're going to do it now. Okay. You didn't know this, did you? No. But we're going to do a song now. There you go. Mr. Devereaux. One, two, two, two. two.
The thing I loved about that speech, Mr. Taylor, was that first bit, how we said we're going to share a little bit of what we do here with our visiting Kano. Kia ora, guys. We hope you enjoy this. Hey, guys, we're going to do bills, and we're going to do our final chance in between. And I know you're all spread out. I know you're all spread out, but we're going to go uh, in this sort of go, Rimu, Kofai, Tawa, Cody. And uh, so when it's, when it's your moment, you just get it, okay? Um, and two, and two, come on, let's go. I want to come to your school. How much fun is that? You know, it's been ages that I have wanted to come and visit here. When I first met Mr. Taylor many, many years ago, we won't say quite how many that was, uh, but it was a long time ago, and he talked about how wonderful this school is and showed me photos. And then I went and had a look at some YouTube videos and I've seen this room and I've seen the piano out the front in the middle and I've seen you having fun and thought I really, really want to go to that school. But nothing beats being in the middle of it. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that with me. I'm a bit like your principal in that I need glasses too. Um, so I'm going to, to put them on to make sure that I get the main points of what I'm here to talk about. But I think actually you've said it all for me. Really, I want to talk about attending school. 
and attending school because you want to be here. And why would you not want to be here when you have a, a time like that every single day? And what I love about your school and what I've seen about your school is that you have amazing attendance rates here. And not every school in the country does, unfortunately, but there's something about your place that makes you really, really special in what you do. And I understand it now that I've been here. So thank you for sharing that with us today. I also want to say that your principal also last year when I was speaking at a conference in Rotorua, just before that horrible August lockdown that we went into a few weeks later, came racing up to me before I had to go and get a plane to get back to Wellington and said, you need to come and visit because look at my attendance rates in my school. Look at what my young people do every single day. And he was so proud, and now I can see why he's so proud of everything that you do. So it's just so good to be here. As I said, I'm here to talk about attendance. I'm here to talk about the fact that we've had attendance in this country in schools that's been going down for quite some time, since 2015. And there's lots of reasons for that. And it's really complex and it looks different as to why that's happening across the whole of the country. But we've actually said enough is enough and we need to turn that around. And we need to do what you do here in this school. And every school in the country needs to look at what they need to be doing. And every parent in the country needs to be looking at what's happening. And every community in the country needs to be look at what, looking at what's happening to ensure that our young people are attending school every single day, when they can, apart from when they're sick. And I do like your message out the front that says, when you're sick, please stay home, because we don't want you coming when you're sick. But when you're well, we want you coming to school every single day. Because coming to school gives you a great education, and having a great education means that you've got fantastic choices that you can make in your life to be the very, very best that you can be. So what are we going to do? Today I'm here to announce an attendance and engagement strategy. And in the attendance and engagement strategy, we've set out clear targets that we want all schools to be working towards, not just schools, Ministry of Education as well, government as well, communities, parents, everybody working together to ensure that every young person wants to be at school and school is the best place in town for them to be. Now we've already put some resourcing into this in the budget and these are things that you, you probably most of you young people here didn't know but a couple of weeks ago the government announced a budget and in that budget we announced the money that would come into the local areas to support this strategy. So it's a bit back to front because we announced the resourcing first and then the strategy that we're launching today. But that's to help you and your schools and your parents and your communities help you be at school every single day. We also want to use what you're doing. How is it that you have such great attendance rates in your school? And we need to find that out and help other schools to develop that as well. So you guys can pat yourselves on the back because you're really doing an amazing job, but I love the fact that you want to do better as well. And I love that because that was my idea as a principal as well. My idea was to be the best that we could be as a school. So I've just double checked with my glasses on because I can't read it without anything that I've got everything covered off there because I don't want to take too, too long. Oh, that's the other thing that I wanted to talk about is that I do like the fact that as a school you're part of the, the healthy lunch programs, the Kaora Kaoko Healthy Lunches and Schools programs. All of those things will help you attend every single day and there are other initiatives that we are putting resourcing in behind to help you get to school every single day. And I love the fact that I've always heard from your principal there are no excuses. And we always make sure that there are no excuses. I don't know whether you know this Mr Taylor but you actually mentioned in the house last week 
Yeah, yeah, for that same reason about saying no excuses. So you're very famous as a school, very famous, and um, people people like to claim you across all sides of Parliament. So, so just remember that people are watching, making certain that those attendance rates stay really good as well. I know that you've got some young people that want to ask me some questions, and I think that we'll, I'll stop there so that they have that opportunity to ask those questions. Um, my name is Xavier. I'm a year eight and a senator from the community council. And my question is, at Manito Intermediate, we believe attendance is really important. And we do a whole heap of things making sure our kids get to school. Why does the minister think attendance is important? Oh, that's a great question. And thank you for asking me that. And thank you for saying that to you here, attendance is so important. I think attendance is, important. attendance is incredibly important because it does lead to an amazing education and I can see that you're having an amazing education here at this school. And when we have an amazing education and when we can do all of the things that help us be part of our communities and be part of society, we've got choices that we can make. We can be whatever we want to be when we've got an education and like your principal said, you can get that by being here every single day. And that's why attendance is important. We have to make sure that we're at school every single day. Thank you. Hi, my name is Miriam and I'm a year eight and I'm a senator from the Curriculum Council. And my question is, when, when you were the principal at Maryville School, what did you do to help motivate your students so they wanted to come to school every day? Oh, fantastic. Very similar to what you do. What I did when I was at Maryville was I wanted uh, Maryville School to be the best place in Maryville that young people wanted to be every day. I wanted them to want to be there. That meant doing what you were doing out here, having fun making certain that our classrooms were engaging, making certain that my teachers had all the resources they needed to be amazing, making certain that if there were things that got in the way, like lack of food at home, that we had the right people, not the school, not the teachers, but the right people who could support those whanos, identifying that, making certain that they could go to the Maryvale Community Centre and, and partner up with social workers and counsellors and people who could help them. But really, the big part of it was that my kids wanted to come every single day. And even if they weren't present for one day, my school would contact them. So I had a wonderful person who would contact them and say, you're right, there's a reason why you're not here today, making certain that we kept in contact, we didn't let it slip. We wanted our young people there every single day because the other part of that was that I missed them. I wanted them to be there because they were part of our wider whānau and it was important that our wider whānau, we were looking out for each other. So we were relentless, just like you are here, we were relentless at ensuring our young people turned up, but also turned up because they enjoyed turning up. Thank you. Kia ora, my name is Jordi. I'm a year eight and a senator from the Community Council here at MI. And my question for you is, did you enjoy going to school when you were younger? If so, what made you want to go to school every day? <laughs> I loved school. I loved school. Um, I probably looked like I was a bit of a nerd, and I was. So I absolutely enjoyed turning up every single day. But you know what really turned, was the thing that turned me on to education? Was a teacher I had when I was six years old. And his name was Mr. Ferguson. And I'm still in contact with Mr. Ferguson. And I'm quite a lot older than six now. But I, um, I kept in contact with him because he changed my life. He made me want to become a teacher because I wanted to be just like him. He played the piano, like what you saw out here. We danced. 
I'm going to say, this will give you a little clue of how old I am, this was back in the 70s, like the mid-70s when I was at school, so a long time ago. And this is, you'd think back then that education was a little bit boring. This is what was different back in that classroom. We sang, we danced, we had a shop in our classroom, we had a Wendy house in our classroom, we played all day, he didn't believe in desks, he cut the legs off desks and put a big roller carpet over them and made them into a stage. We had rats, mice, fish, budgies, rabbits, um, and we had to take those home over the holidays. I was always very upset that my mother wouldn't let me take Ben the rat home, but that's another story. But we, we just had fun. And I learned so much that year. He knew so much about education as a teacher. He knew way more than what a lot of people knew as teachers back then. And he was so far ahead of his time. But he made me want to come to school every day. Even when I was sick, I wanted to go. I couldn't. But even when I was sick, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be there because it was fun. But not only was it fun, I was learning so much. And at the end of that year, I had decided as a six-year-old that I wanted to be a teacher. Now, I said I was still in contact with him. Uh, I didn't get back into contact with him until about 10 years ago. And I thought that I would look him up because I thought I'd just let him know the impact that he's had on my life because sometimes as a teacher you don't know where your impact stops. And so I did contact him and when I first came into Parliament in 2018, he contacted me, he still lived in Christchurch, and he said, I'm coming up to Wellington, can we meet? And do you know, I was so nervous about meeting my former teacher but I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if it wasn't for him. He gave me that education as a very young person that enabled me to make choices in my life. And I would not be a minister now if he hadn't been that big influence. And that's what I want for all our young people in this country, is to have those same choices. So that if you want to be a member of parliament or a minister, or even the Prime Minister, that you have the education behind you that enables you to make that choice. But if you want to be something else in your life, if you want to be a builder, if you want to be an engineer, if you want to be a teacher, an education enables you to be able to make those choices. And to get that education, you need to be at school. Any other questions? That's it. Hey, look, thank you. So what I have said is I'm here. I'm announcing the strategy here today. I've come specially to your school to announce it because you are so amazing. And as I said, you're a bit of a famous school. And you turn up to school every day when you are able to, when you are well. And that's what makes you so amazing. So that's why we've come here today. I want to say to you, I hope that the rest of your year goes really well. I know that it has been really tough for you over the last couple of years with COVID and now flu season hitting you as well. But I hope that it starts to settle down. I hope that you're able to be here more than what you've been able to be here before. But the biggest message I want to say to you is keep coming and keep having fun in your learning because you are amazing and you have absolutely bright futures because of the choices you're going to be able to make. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.